hey guys in today's video we are in margibi county with a group of young liberians from help a mother and newborn social impact project that is helping to reduce maternal and newborn deaths in the country hello guys welcome back to my channel thank you all for being so consistent in today's video i am in mark Gibby with help a mother and newborn and this is a social impact project that aims to reduce maternal and newborn deaths in mark Gibby county and this whole project is being run by this tiny amazing and innovative young woman her name is miss lida dolo and today she's doing some donations in my Gibby county at some schools and clinics here so hello lida how are you doing how are you larica i'm doing good i'm happy to be here see me i'm excited oh to God. have reached this far okay so tell my audience about yourself and what you're studying in liberia and what you hope to pursue um, and then from there we can talk about help a mother and newborn great so hello everyone my name is lila precious which larica they didn't forget Precious. <laughs> and I'm a medical student studying at the AM Doggy at the School of Medicine to be a doctor. So my plan is to be one of the best doctors in Africa to come. So I want to be a doctor to save life and help a lot of people. And apart from that, I also want to run projects, social impact projects that will affect the life of Liberians. Because I believe that we're the change that we hope to see is Allah would do it, but it's not done at all. Yeah, so if you want to change the world, you have to take a look in the mirror, start with yourself. Sure. So talking about social impact projects that you want to do throughout your career, mm -hmm. um, what motivated you to start um, Help a Mother in Newborn? Okay. I mean, help a mother and newborn with the aim to address some of the challenges faced in reducing maternal and newborn deaths came about with the many challenges pregnant women face, like the very high maternal and newborn death rate in Liberia. Liberia is among the first 10 countries in the world with the highest maternal and newborn death. The wow. global statistic, they want to reduce maternal death by 2030 to at least 145 deaths per 100,000 life births. But you will not imagine Liberia has over 600 right now women that are dying in every 100,000 life births. And we're so, so far to reaching the global target. So this is one thing that pushed me. I believe that if we are to reach the global target, mm -hmm. we have to put our hands together. We have to do what we can do to be able to address the many challenges. And come to think about it, Lorita, most of the challenges are, are things that can be avoided. Yes. yes. Most of them are preventable. Most of the reasons you see pregnant women dying is because she does not have access to health care. She does not have the knowledge, know why whether it's important to go to the hospital or not, do not have to find, I mean, there are all preventable causes. So I believe that there is something that we can do to be able to address the challenges which will contribute to a reduction in the very high maternal newborn deaths in Liberia. I mean, um, it's sad because when you're on Facebook, you're on Instagram, you're on Twitter, Liberia Facebook, a lot of people complain about hospitals in Liberia. They complain about how their family members are not being given the care and attention. Imagine Even that. people who have the money, people imagine who have that. the finance, right? So, imagine. so imagine those who do not have the finance. People who cannot come for regular checkups because they cannot afford to do so. Ladies who go through all nine months without knowing what is going on with their babies, what is wrong with them. You know, it's it's really sad and Lita. Sometimes when, I, when I'm in town, I see pregnant women selling cold water under the sun. I mean, like, that affects the mother and it affects the, ch the children as well, or the child. So it's like, it's really sad, but it's really important what you're doing. And this is something that I have admired for a long, long time. So it's really nice that we're doing this interview today. Yeah, thank you. So um, since you started this um, impact project, how long has it been going on for? Okay, we started. I'm not the only one running this project. My colleague Bernice Goma is not here. Okay, we started it together, and we have been running it. It was in 
2021 when we had the opportunity to go to Switzerland for a three month internship program and we came back in August. I mean, being in Switzerland and see how the people not only using materials, we, we went to local birthing homes and we saw that even minimum resources you can use it to reduce maternal that you can use it to save a pregnant woman life. You just need the support, you just need the information. We decided that we need to do something about maternal health in Liberia. And this is the project that we started to a be birth, able to yes. have a mother and yes, newborn. Yes, sure. So um, since you started 2021, how many um, clinics and schools have you been able to work with? Okay, we have worked with 20 institutions in total and 10 South. schools and 10 health facilities. <laughs> we have been working in Markibi County, in all of the districts in Markibi County. How many districts so far? Four health districts and five educational districts okay. in total in Markibi County. And we're working with the schools and the health facilities, as the local clinics and local health centers working with midwives and not forgetting the traditional midwives because right now we know that traditional midwives used to if you remember used to do delivery but now they are stopped from doing delivery we feel like these women play a cardinal role we just need to be able to give them the right knowledge and the right support and they will care for the women in our community there are communities with far to reach no, clinic, the no access to, talk to them the health facilities, identify dangerous signs, and then be able to send them soon off to the hospital. So True. we're working with traditional midwives. We're working with midwives at the clinic. We're working with pregnant women and at the schools. We're working with the administration and the young adolescents. So yeah. And so far, I'm um, working with um, 20 plus institutions. Um, how has the reception been like Trust from me. the schools, from the health facilities, and just the people? Because, yeah, Trust just like Nigeria. It has been hell of a crazy journey. I mean, some people will open up, embrace the idea, and they will be willing to work with you. Some people, they just have this close mindset that, especially for some of the schools, once they are not, they won't benefit from it. They don't see how important the students need it. So they will so busy to get involved and now we are only we are only narrowing down to seven schools. We're working with ten for three of the schools were not responsive at all. We was we were continuing to support them, provide the resources, work with the students, but it's not encouraging. So we can't kill ourselves. The seven schools that are involved, we feel like we should continue working with them. So how is it like working with the health facilities in the school? Like how do you get the donations to them? Trust me. Most of the time, you know, we are raising funds. Locally and how do you raise the funds? And internationally. Because we went to Switzerland, we were able to establish partnership and put some support okay. from individuals and committed to supporting at least 50% to 75% of the project budget. For the remaining, we had to raise money. I mean, now a lot of people can call up beggars because we are all the time begging help our pregnant women, help our mother and newborn in Liberia, okay. help us. But it has been a challenging moment, but it has been great so far. And the level of support for my friends, my network has been so massive because sometimes we'll have one dollar campaign sometimes and we'll contribute. we have events, small raising events where we sell these shirts. And sometimes we'll go to offices, sometimes we'll go on university campus just to beg people for one dollar, two dollar, hundred dollar, just to ensure that we be able to reach out to these pregnant women, reach out to the schools and support them. First of all, uh, I'm not asking this first, but then we end up going to how you raise the funds, mm -hmm. right? So how do you get the donations to the schools and the clinics and the donations that you give them? Do you have like a duration of time? Because I believe that if you give someone this today, okay. it's not going to sustain them forever. Sure. So is there a sustainability plan or stuff? So yes, I should help a mother. She have lasted for a year. Okay. We started in 2021 and we have in there 2022. Okay. But working with the people for the time, we're not only providing resources, we're also providing knowledge. We realized that we needed to put up a, a sustainability plan to ensure that after we have left this traditional that we have established, will continue, the clubs will continue being run. So we sign a contract MOU with the different institutions that you're going to 
continue the clubs, yeah. including schools and clinics. Yes, schools and clinics that we're going to provide supplies for a time frame. And after the supplies are exhausted, they are going to find ways. We're going to work with them with to come up with fundraising strategy, whether it's included in a brochure, whether it's asking the students to pay just like a minimal of registration. Amount. Yes, minimal amount. It will help because the materials will actually finish one day. And when it's finished and it's not being replenished, then the whole program will be like you're starting you're starting over. So what are some of the supplies that you that are part of the donation that you make? Okay, for the schools we gave them first aid kits. Because one of the most of the schools never had um, first aid management system. They, they complain that when students get hurt, when students feel pain, they have to go home. Especially girls when they are on their period, they have to go home because they do not have parts. So we added that in our project and we provided first aid materials like pain medication, gas, tablet, pharmacy medication, and wound dressing materials and sanitary pads. For the health facilities, we provide um big belly of materials for the pregnant women. Do you know that once a pregnant woman is coming to give birth, she is required to bring materials like chloride, gel, tar soap, soap, and etc. If she doesn't bring it, even though it's free delivery, she she will not be accepted. So this is a challenge that we're trying to address. And this is the reason why most of the pregnant women were not or are not going to the health facility to give birth. So to address that, we brought about the Big Better Club, we're giving them the knowledge and also since this was a challenge, we tried to address it. That if they are coming to the hospital regularly, we're going to provide these things for them. So yes, we provided delta, tax soap, sanitary pads, all of the things they need to deliver, not to make them stay home anyway. Thank you. Amazing. So um, we're here in Maggie today and you're here to do a couple of donations. So um, we just got through with the school and now we're at the clinic. So can you tell us the name of the clinic? And I won't be able to follow you everywhere today. <laughs> okay. But yes, talking about the places that I'll be able to go today. Okay, we are here at Center Clinic. Center Clinic is located in Wiala. We are going next to Massacre Town Clinic. And I think that's where you'll be following us. From there, we'll go to Wiala School and then we'll go to Pelita. That is the farthest distance for today. My teammates don't want to hear about it, but we are going there anyways. So, um, Lida, how can people reach out to support this initiative? I mean, we are open for donations. We have our Facebook page, our social media. Let me say, we have our social media pages. You can follow us on Help a Mother in Newborn Liberia, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. We have our donation information there. But I mean, we should, we should just start up with you following our work. Probably this will not convince you enough, but follow our work. You will see all of the things that we have done so far. And the interesting thing is the team is a group of young people. All of us on the team is below 30. Group of young people are making this massive impact. We just need the support. We just need the help that we can get. So in, in any ways, you can support us, support our course, whether it's committing to, to provide uh, materials for one facility pregnant women, or others committing to providing first aid kit for school for another year. We are open to that and we appreciate it. You can reach out to Lorita or you follow our page. And I'm going to leave the links, um, their Facebook, their Instagram, and I'm also going to leave her number in the description box. You can reach out to Lida, you can follow them online and get access to what they're doing, um, follow their work, and just what she said. is amazing, she's doing amazing, her team is doing amazing in Liberia, and this is the kind of projects that we're supposed to be supporting if we want Liberia to move forward, if we want Liberia to be on par with other countries. So thank you all so much for watching this video. Thank you for being so consistent. If you're new, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and tap the notifications bell. Thank you. Bye-bye.